All right. Happy Wellness Wednesday. I like to call Wednesdays. My name is Becca, longtime Suiha Success Coach, I'm joining you today to talk about the powerful modality of hypnotherapy. I like to call it um, life coaching on steroids, which is not healthy in any way, shape, or form. However, I feel like it is a way to unlock and let our subconscious be the guides, which coaching is, is it's really taking our ourselves to those deepest places to realign, refocus, reaffirm, and just kind of reactivate how we want to show up in the world. Um, so I know that's for me. It's what it did. Um, really quick, I... Before I came to Suiha, I, I didn't fully believe or understand the power of hypnotherapy just because of what media had kind of done done with it. And when I finally leaned into it, it's the most profound and most, I would say, successful way of creating an immediate change that I was looking for. So I became a doubter to a full believer, and then I took it online. So now I actually love the modality um, myself, and I look forward to integrating this into my plan of retirement in the future. I already am manifesting and seeing where I'm going to work and deliver this as a modality as part of my coaching services. But most importantly, I want to introduce the lady of the hour whose program this actually is. This is your labor of love, um, Linda Bennett, to the camera and Mike. Hi, Linda. Thanks for being here. Hi, thank you for having me here. Yes, I know that is a big way to introduce you. Um, there are too many awards that you you have under your belt for me to list them all here. But you are our hypnotherapy curriculum program director, creator. Um, you for both the online and on campus programs, you're certified clinical hypnotherapist, board certified instructor, certifying examiner, certified life coach, 30 years of experience in higher ed training, corporate training. And your passion is making learning a comprehensive and fun experience that's engaging. So did I leave anything out? I know I left. Oh, There's a no, lot of no, that. You're also <laughs> magical and very wise, well-grounded in who you are. And I think um, in session, you help others kind of reach that place through your own ways that you show up. So mm -hmm. you're an amazing instructor leading the way. Um, I understand you recently held a gifts and graces that was more of a, what, what kind of setting was this kind of walk us through what this was? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. You know, what we did is I, every month Suiha does gifts and graces and there's always a theme. And so I was asked to do the presentation on Friday night and I thought, well, if I'm going to present how do I get my hypnotherapy graduates involved? So I put a call out to get some people involved and we did a mini seminar. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, the, the air is not the best today. No, you're fine. Anyway, so what we did is I did a talk and then we broke out into smaller workshops. And what was, we had over 70, 75 people there. And the graduates were there were just so excited because some of them they were doing their own workshops. And one of them, we we're going into the other classrooms for the workshops. And there's the main room, which is the big room that holds a lot of people. The, and the group that was in one of the classrooms, they had too many people in there. So we had to move to the big room. And so <laughs> that was so exciting. And then on Sunday, we offered the graduates doing hypnotherapy sessions and we had more clients than we had graduates. And wow. that, that what the best thing that came from it for me was the graduates who had been a little hesitant to get their business going are now getting their businesses going. Mm. That was the best I could have asked for. 
And they were, I mean, one girl went home and she immediately took her second spare room and tore it apart and set it up so she could do hypno sessions. And, and wow. that was, that was exciting for me. I love that so much. We're going to do um, that in July. Okay. I was going to say, do you have another one? I forgot what month. So yeah, July. do we already have the big room scheduled so we, we can just go right. ahead and ramp yeah, up? Yeah, doing, we're doing gifts and graces. I don't know exactly what the dates are because that's also has 4th of July in that month. And so you always, okay. so we always change when we're actually doing gifts and graces. But yeah, we've got it all planned out and it's just... It's really exciting to see the graduates excited. That's the best part for me. Yeah, I know. Um, and we have a couple of graduates who might jump on the end of this call to just share their testimony. Mm -hmm. But um, I just want to honor the input that was shared when we came in. Robert said he loves listening to Linda speak. If you're a student in the program, you will understand why. If you're a graduate, you totally get it. Um, Nikki's excited to be here and Courtney's looking at exploring hypnotherapy to add an energy component to her coaching business. Um, so Thanks, before, Mitch. yeah, so before we went live, you know, I, I, I asked people to raise their hand. If you're watching on social media, do comment, ask questions, but also share, you know, like what career path do you come from? What industry do you already work in? Sometimes we get doctors, nurses, you know, coaches energy workers, uh, maybe a hairstylist or, you know, anyone who has that direct connection with a client. Yeah. Um, social worker. I see a lot of social work. Oh, really? Okay. So let's ask the questions to Linda while we're here. Um, let's, let's talk about hypnotherapy in general, you know, Linda, cause you, you're so well-versed in the industry. Maybe you used to describe hypnotherapy like this. How do you describe hypnotherapy as a healing arts modality? Wow. You know, I've been at this for a long time and I stumbled into it by accident. I did mm -hmm. not know what I was getting into. And after I had one hypnotherapy session, I was in class like two weeks later. So, and that totally changed my life completely. So I think it surprises a lot of people. They think it's this. And it's this, and it, like you said, it's so powerful and life-changing. And it's like, I go around going, why isn't everybody doing this? You know, it just seems like we all, because it, it makes a difference so rapidly. And as far as a practitioner, I can't imagine doing anything else. I absolutely love this. And I fall more in love with it every day. Oh, now you really guys, that's a big view of me. Um, you know, I think you can't get bored with this work. And you've mentioned coaching a number of times. And to me, life coaching and hypnotherapy go hand in hand. And a lot of people consider hypnotherapy energy medicine. So energy and, and Reiki and life coaching, all those things are so complementary to what we do. So you can do, you can design your business really around your particular gifts and talents, which I think is so important. I'm still here. Okay. I, I, if there are questions, I can't see them. So I don't know. <laughs> no, my internet uh, has been very wonky. Ah. I have full bars, but it keeps going out intermittently. Ah. I don't know. Where were we? I was just talking about hypnotherapy and life coaching and energy medicine and Reiki and all those modalities really do blend well together. Yes, they do. Um, I think you guys were still streaming, so we didn't lose anything. It's interesting. Okay. But, um, okay, so I missed that part, but you stumbled into it. and Oh, that's I did. I, I was not, ha I had no idea what I was getting into. Okay. And after the first session, I was like, I walked out of there kind of almost in shock going, what just happened? And then right. like I, said, I was in school two, two weeks later and I've never turned my back to that. It's always been the, the direction I've been going ever since. And that was over 30 years ago. 
Yes. And I have taken so much, like I'm a yoga teacher. I took holistic nutrition, life coaching, Reiki, and spiritual studies. I stumbled too into hypnotherapy by, by, by having a session Mm -hmm. before I was doing a public speaking event. And it totally helped me to not say the word that I did not want to say on stage. Um, And it transformed, it transformed my way to show up. Right. And I, like I said, I was a doubter and then I was a believer and then I'm a student. So I only took the 100 hour program, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. I do plan to take the other part of the program, the more advanced classes. I loved writing scripts. I loved being able to have scripts from Linda that I use, but then I could tailor and integrate based on my client's needs, Mm -hmm. you know, but know to ask the questions of like the environment that I would even take them through in the meditative process. Because also as like trauma informed coaches, we know that there might be some triggers for people. You know, if I'm working with somebody who's um, sensitive to water or, you know, certain sounds or sensations, you know, experiencing something as they're going in, it's those things that we have to ask, which I really, really, really appreciate um, tailoring these scripts and and intros to get them even deep into where they need to go what is your insight on that linda well i think i think the key to it and this goes back to coaching if Mm -hmm. we're a really good coach we ask phenomenal questions Mm -hmm. and that's the key you ask all the right questions to begin with and you get a wealth of information and it's so interesting because afterwards I'll have a client go, wow, that was great. How did you do that? And I'm thinking, I just gave you back what you just told me. Yes. So the client really is the is the critical element in that they give you so much information and so much to work with. And they're, they're surprised. And I think that just goes back to the philosophy we have with both our coaching and our hypno program is that the client really has all the answers within. They just need someone to coach coach them out of them and they don't even realize. And that become, becomes, to me, I don't want to say it's a game, but it's mm. me wanting to really be that masterful at listening that I don't miss a beat. Yeah. It feels like a game because it's so fun and it so is. intriguing to see yeah. the outcome by the power of who they are and what they already know. And right. you just get to watch this. Like I had Alice in Wonderland behind me when I showed up. It's like, you just get to watch this fascinating story unfold before you that it's live entertainment in the healthiest way. It's um, better than reading a book. Like, wow. And we can't even take the credit for it. We just ask the right questions and they get to experience. And of course, we just experience through them. Linda, just to be safe, I'm going to make you the co-host in case I get um, kicked out. But that way you can still flow. Um, Courtney said, I would say hypnotherapy is the best way to incorporate an energy component into a virtual life coaching business. Yes. Tell us more about that. And maybe you can um, raise your hand. Someone raised their hand. And where did you go? Hold on. Let me look at my participants. Attendees. Someone had their hand raised. Who was it? Please re-raise your hand. You raised it quick and then put it down. Aha. EBK. I'm going to allow you to allow you to talk is what it says. (laughs) Um, If you can unmute, then you can. Yeah. I was just letting you know I'm here. That's all. Oh, hi. High Hello. five on the screen there. Thank you for being here. While I have you here, what interests you about hypnotherapy? To see if it works. That's all really. Oh. Yes, I'm just Ooh. curious. It to, does. To, to further uh, expand me talents. Absolutely. Understood. Absolutely. Have you ever <laughs> tried it? Yeah. No, I've never tried it. And I've never been underneath. Uh, under the influence of it so i just want to see 
what's what's it about for the most part? So do you go by EBK or do you go by something else? No, that's right. EBK. EBK. Okay. Last so, name Voorhees. Got that. Okay. So have you ever gotten in your car, driven someplace and questioned whether or not you stopped at the light or turned at the right place or whatever it may have been? Uh, maybe because of like not paying attention. But yeah. Okay. Say so believe possible. it or not, that's actually a state of hypnosis. I can see that. I could kind of see that. I could see that. So it's very normal that we go in and out of hypnosis all the time. It's not, it, it, it can be more formalized, but at the same time, we automatically drift off and lose, con you know, lose that focus on some level. And yet we still get where we need to go. Right. Okay. I can see that. Cause I've heard people say they drift. When they drift, when they drive. So I, I, I guess I can hear what you're talking about. That right. Yeah. So it's not that unusual. And it's a lot of people are afraid to do hypnosis because they're afraid they're going to lose control. And I truly believe that when you're in a state of hypnosis, you're in greater control of yourself than any other time. Hmm. All right. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I this love it. This is true. This is true. And uh, EBK, do you have like a coaching background? Just curious, like what's your main industry that you're serving now? Uh, main industry right now, all I do is just train, lift weights, and just embedment. I just, like I said, I want to expand the horizons. So I've heard about this long time ago, and I got the opportunity to see what this is about. And if I like it, I'll most likely take a try to get certified in it. And like I said, add it to me list of uh, qualifications. EBK, I've been recently working with a number of athletes. Uh, and it has done amazing things. And I don't want to divulge private information about any of them. But a couple of the people that I worked with recently were at the Olympics and came home with some medals. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes. And I've got some more that I'm working with. And another one that just won a MMA title. And so there's a lot of athletes that are actually using hypnosis. And in many cases, kind of surprised at how well it works after one session. Okay. Like I said before, I'm intrigued. Fabulous. Um, I thank you for saying this, Linda, because also EBK, knowing your profession, then knowing your passion, you can also develop and you do this kind of on the end of your program, but you talk about your niche market, like who's my target audience, who's my next client, who's my first client, you get to set the bar, right? You get to set that avatar of who they are, what they're doing, and then you can formulate programs to support them, right? As you reach out, like in my head, when you said that, um, Linda, I was thinking like, wow, like you could even go after a Tiger Woods who's on the end of his game, but it's such a psychological. It is. It's a, it's a mental game. It really yes. is. Yes. And yes. I have one former student who's a practitioner now who's also um starting to train to possibly swim the english channel Ooh, and that is a mental uh and she realizes, I, that's not even a game yeah she realizes how much all of her training is really goes hand in hand with her hypnotherapy training mm. and mm -hmm. that's that's what's really amazing i've seen um, I got I, I don't want to give anybody's name away or anything, but I have somebody yeah. who was a ranked nationally in the top five in their particular sport, lost a match, dropped to 30th, and six months later won the national title. Profound. It truly is. The mind over matter component is. is literally is. everything. Yeah. Uh, Alma says I can listen to Linda all day. Oh, Alma. Yeah, Alma. 
It says, how, uh, Courtney says, how do you think hypno and Reiki differ in benefits, Linda? I don't know that they differ in benefits, except that I think, and I'm sure other Reiki practitioners would probably have a little different spin on this. I do. Because I'll, I think I'll let you they go, go hand in hand. I think that with hypnosis, it's a little bit more of a mental game. And Reiki is a little bit more of the energetic game, but they do complement one another. I agree with that. Courtney, I'm going to ask you as a Reiki practitioner, for, if you are one already, do you speak in the Reiki sessions to your clients and or do you ask questions and allow your client to speak? So that's my question. I will let you answer that live. Let me unmute you. And then Maria, I see you have your hand up. So Courtney, if you would unmute. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, I hi. actually don't offer that service at all. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just kind of getting started into that, into this realm. So that's why I'm asking you kind of probing questions Perfect. so I can kind of figure out which direction to go. Okay. Into. But I do have, have a, a little bit of a... I do have a little bit of a coaching background. Perfect. Good. This is perfect. As a Reiki practitioner myself, and I assume you've studied the, the chakras and you understand that there's a color and energy, a vibration, mm -hmm. a question, an element for each um, chakra. What I have done in session, and I don't say everyone has to do this, but what I've done is when you hover the hands over that particular energy area, you can ask the coaching question. And this can play similar to hypnotherapy is you can, you're can you asking the subconscious. So when they're very relaxed and going into that state, this is not yoga nidra because they're fully awake, right? It's still hovering over those and asking the question, allowing the client to speak their truth. So mm -hmm. is it similar? Yes. Is it as deep? No. Um, and it's as deep as the client's willing and able to go um, in the session, but you can hover over each in Reiki and then let the subconscious be spoken or the conscious be spoken. The key that hypnotherapy um, and coaching do too is just like Reiki, it's holding space after the session to kind of unpack what comes up for people. This mm -hmm. is where it can be more useful. Um, I'm not saying it's not without it, but this is where you can go further, right? Got it. Does that help? <laughs> it does. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, but Linda's right. It is more energetic, whereas um, hypnotherapy is a very interactive, I think, subconscious experience where they can remember even segments of it or not remember anything at right. all. Right. So, and I think with hypnotherapy, a lot of times people are coming to hypnotherapy to change major behavior. In other words, let's say they want to quit smoking. Um, they want to quit biting their nails, whatever it may be. And that to me, I don't see a lot of people using Reiki for those kinds of things. Right. So a lot depends on what the intent of the client is. And what's wonderful is the more tools you have in your toolbox, then you can meet that client wherever they're at in that given moment because they might change. They came to see you about quitting smoking and three sessions later, they say, you know what? That's not my problem. And it's this over here. So you, you can bob and weave with other modalities that really complement one another. Yes. That's right. And I would say Reiki is more for like unblocking certain um, energy fields, right. you know, being able to speak truths, you know, the throat chakra, what's holding you back from speaking your truth? What are you afraid to say? What have you not said? And there it is. Right. So Maria, uh, you have your hand raised, madam. Can unmute. Hi, could you hear me? Hi. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, well, thank you for putting this on together. First of all, I just really quickly, I'll share my experience. About four years ago, um, I had my dentist um, mm. uh, do a procedure on me, uh, which is called Invisalign. 
And mm -hmm. after she did that procedure, I developed a slurping tick uh, that I could not get rid of. I saw three dentists, an orthodontics, and recently two neurologists. I've had an MRI and they were ready to put me on medication that would not take away my slurping tick, but would um, would uh, help it. But there were auto other side effects that would be involved. Um, I was recently in Sedona uh, on vacation and I saw this um, hypotherapist. I said, you know, what can I lose? I'm just going to go see her. My husband's like, you're wasting your money on that. <laughs> I said, I'm just desperate at this point. I don't want to go on medication. And um, long story short, after two hours with her, it disappeared. It completely went away. And uh, I'm amazed everyone that knows me, including my husband, can't get over it, how uh, it's just gone. Um, after all those doctors and all those years of suffering with this slurping tick, I couldn't control. Uh, so uh, anyway, I decided to, to look into the program uh, and I researched a couple of places, but uh, I really like your website and uh, what you what, what you offer. But my concerns were that I'm not in the medical field. Uh, and I think Linda addressed that in the beginning, which I appreciate how she started. Uh, two other individuals that I've talked to that don't know each other, I told them about my experience going through uh, hyper, high, hyper therapy. Uh, and the, two of them told me the same thing. And I just wanted to ask, uh, they said that they were afraid because after they had a session, they experienced hallucinations afterwards. Um, huh. And it was two different people. Uh, so I thought, really? Uh, one of them said she thought she saw like her husband who was diseased. <laughs> and the other one didn't really tell me what her experience was, but she did say she had hallucinations. So I, I wanted to um, uh, ask about that. I can't speak specifically about the hallucinations that one individual had because there's a lot more to that. But I will tell you that I tell my clients all the time that their dreams may become more vivid. Because the dream world and hypnosis feels very similar. Mm -hmm. And the dreams are generated by your subconscious. And sometimes clients will come in and they'll say, I had the worst nightmare. And I'm going, yay. And they're thinking, <laughs> I've lost my mind. And it's like, no, that tells me you're clearing something. You're letting go of something that's been stored subconsciously. And it's coming up and it's time to release it. So... I, as far as I've never had a in 30 years, a client come to me and say, I'm, I'm hallucinating now. I, I don't even, I mean. Yes, I couldn't find any information at all. I, I love try to look for symptoms or, or what could happen. And uh, so I'm not sure, um, but it just caught my attention that both people right. um, made that statement to me. And right. I just wanted to follow up on it. You know, I, I think, love this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think part of it is the imagination. The imagination is a key component to hypnotherapy. And some people have a very active imagination and some people have really stifled that for various reasons. And so I don't know that I would call hallucinations. Right. You know, sometimes they're imagining can seem like that because if, if somebody imagined their deceased loved one, um, that can happen even in a session. And is that, what if it happened in their dreams? Is that a right or a wrong? No, it's just, they're open to making that connection. So yeah, I need to know a little bit more before I can say specifically. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question. And I will, I will piggyback on that. Um, and thank you for sharing that, Maria. That's profound. Um, and I understand their use of word is hallucination because it's something they've never experienced before that might feel scary. So um, interesting word choice for them, right? And that's part of the coaching process is why do we do we do we associate hallucination with a negative 
experience and or could you have unlocked a part of your consciousness that's actually called in what you've been asking for all along? Have you been praying to speak to your husband? Have you been asking yourself to reconnect or say sorry or or understand something that happened that you didn't get closure to? So you could have in session, they could have in session removed a piece that was blocking a sort of connection because it's not like he's gone, gone, in my opinion. Um, I have people who will reach out to me in my dreams and ask me to check on people in the current state. And when I haven't, they've actually died. And, and I have to listen to my intuition and my intuition is the higher nudge of just like, Hey, these check-ins and I do listen now. Cause I didn't before, but it, could it be Maria that it's unlocking a new realm for them to explore too. So I love Linda's um, part of the dream. And yes, we can go deeper when we're dreaming, right? I'm like a lucid dreamer. So I like know I'm dreaming and can interact and go back into dreams where some people don't, they say they don't dream. Um, so it's interesting, but it's that coaching component, Maria, when you do um, have coaching in your back pocket to ask those questions to the client to help them unpack what it really is for them. Right. Becca, since you uh, finished the certificate, the 100 hours, um, 100. 100 hours, yeah. um, uh, how confident do you, did, do you feel after doing that um, to actually do like hands-on? Yes. How confident do I speak in my, in what I'm saying right now? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very confident. I feel fully prepared. I feel very educated. I'm sharing my screen just because this is our hypnotherapies program page. Um, so I did take the 100 hours online. Um, so I got to go through the curriculum in a very organized, very interactive manner. Um, Sherry Gilbert was my instructor, extremely interactive, supportive, gave full resources. All of my classmates were participating. Uh, we would have sessions with each other. So I would have hypnotherapy done on me. I would do hypnotherapy on them. I looked forward to my quote unquote homework like it was my everything because it was helping me on so many levels, um, professionally, personally, and it helped improve my relationships, my ability to communicate step outside of some negative behavior patterns that I had developed. Um, so to see myself in some new ways, which helped me see others in new ways. Um, I could, I could use scripts. I could write scripts. I knew how to take someone into session safely, go through the flow, um, and then bring them out in. Becca, I'm going to have to step out for just a second. Okay. Oh yeah. No problem. No problem. In the sessions that I did have with paying clients, um, they would come out saying like, wow, this is the most amazing thing that I've ever experienced. They would come out feeling fully like relaxed, rejuvenated and excited about the next session, but excited to see how the change that they were seeking going into session would unfold throughout the week. And then lo and behold, they come back for their next session. They report back that it did improve. Here's how. So I felt very confident in my 100 hours of training. And I'm excited to take it further when I do have the bandwidth to do that, which I don't yet. But the higher, the advanced professional hypnotherapy is what I love and celebrate and look forward to because I feel like more and more people are taking it seriously um, and just trying it. You know, your first session can help you change from a doubter like I was to a full on believer. And in my manifestation, I will lean on this as my number one tool 
for my coaching practice as I retire. Like I really want to use hypnotherapy as my, my tool of healing arts specifically to bring people in and to have the deeper sessions. Does that help answer questions for you? Marie? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Of course. Of course. What other questions do we have? I was going to try to not go over 30 minutes, Linda. I told you I always do. Um, That's okay. On top of the 100 hours. So whether you take it online or on campus, you can always transfer it up and into the 350 hour program. Um, So I did share that page. I will share it in chat just so you all can go explore. Um, everyone here, make sure you can see that in the chat. So the 100 hours is the level one, two, and three, but then the on the 350 hour program, you take that further into advanced techniques, fears, phobias, addictions, dreams and metaphors, script writing, medical imagery, past life regression, advanced professional hypnotherapy, foundations of life coaching, is where you get that coaching piece added on and you go through the entrepreneur's journey, kind of like we explored here with EBK of who's your niche market, right? So when you go to market, you're branding yourself, you understand your messaging um, so that you can help convert conversations with people into paying clients. Um, And it's profound, Maria, how many hours should we dedicate to homework a week? And would you be online, Maria, or on campus? Mm, yes. Yes, online. Okay. Linda? I'm going to say it varies, um, but I think at least a couple of hours in the evening you know, to read your textbook, um, to do some research, to do your practices. Practicing is, is paramount. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do a lot of that with your classmates, but also on the the um, online site, we have people who are looking for sessions that might be in a different program, but they'll sign up. So you're going to have an opportunity and you want to do as many of those as you can. Yes, practice, 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 mm-hmm. for sure. And I'll just answer that as is from a student perspective. Um, cause ideally every night would be great. And thank you for saying that as a teacher, Linda, <laughs> as a procrastinating human being, I would sometimes leave it to the weekend to do my homework, but I was still dedicating about four hours of putting in the time and it didn't feel like homework because it was so purposeful and useful for me that it felt, um, just more nurturing in self-care. Right and self-development so um and yeah like she said it's different every week good question um trudy said can you legally start a practice with the 100 hour certificate depends on what state you live in in most cases absolutely uh right now hypnotherapy is an unregulated modality for most states there's a few states that have a few caveats of things that you have to do a little differently and but from in most cases after 100 hours you absolutely can start your business i did it after 100 hours that's all i had when i started and then i i started my business and then i finished the rest of my training so i was doing them hand in hand yeah perfect let us know if that answered your question trudy um and you can get you know once you do your llc you can get insurance to have everything back you um and and you you learn a lot about when you're starting your program too, um, what not to do as a hypnotherapist. Everything's confidential. We have our just like coaching, we have um, kind of the rules that we abide by to honor the profession professionally. So this is not just like a hobby. This is for mm-hmm. profession. So right. great question. Um, What in-person classes will Linda be teaching next year? (laughs) Linda? Well, that's a good, interesting question. Linda, um, so a year ago, I had two massive strokes. 
Mm. And I've been coming back from that. And I still work with clients. I still coach a lot of graduates. And I definitely will be on campus for things like the past life, subconscious intervention, those classes I teach on campus. And I have been training some new practitioners to become educators as well. And then I work with them and I team teach with them. So I try to be there as much as I can. I completely forgot about that, Linda, because you show up with the same energy as you always have that I totally forgot that. So thank you. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Have you had any hypnotherapy sessions in, in relation to those experiences? Well, you know, what's really interesting is the doctors are thrilled and amazed at how well I'm doing. And I think it's because I've been doing self-hypnosis from the get-go. When I was first in the hospital, mm -hmm. I was already doing self-hypnosis going, okay, what do I need to do here? And so I was doing a lot of that work. And I think that made a big, big difference to how I responded mm -hmm. to the whole process. And there, there, it's like, and 20 years ago, I had congestive heart failure. So I've been having some heart issues up through the whole thing. And they told me 20 years ago that I was going to have to have a heart transplant. Never had to have it. Wow. And again, I, I really say, think that's because of the self-hypnosis that I do. And we teach you self-hypnosis right from the beginning. Right away. And the more, and so this is something, it's a tool that you will use the rest of your life. And I'm a perfect example of that. Yeah, I, I loved self-hypnosis out mm -hmm. of the beginning. I think I've always been doing it subconsciously. Right. Um, as a child growing up in not a great environment at some times, I think I had to, right? We have our self, um, our coping mechanisms. Right. And I, you know, I used to, I go in my closet and just kind of do my thing and and it it helped but right well and i had i had insomnia as a kid mm. I had really? to, and, and it was hypnosis that got me to start sleeping and sleep is mm. so important mm -hmm. it is the most vital for me 100 percent. Right. if i don't right. do that i i'm not right. the human being i, I right. strive to be right. yeah anita has her hand raised uh, anita would you like to unmute madame Yes, I have a quick question. I'm happy. Hi. Hi. I don't know why it's not letting me show my picture. I mean, I even have this. Oh, it's because it's a webinar. I think I have oh. it disallowed. Oh, okay. Um, I'm looking at the cost. I already had visited there and I'm kind of torn between the aromatherapy and the hypnotherapy, but there there's two sections, but it doesn't share what the um the 100 hours are. I'm looking, I'm looking. Do you happen to have that offhand? Um, yeah, and I can send you the link to the calendar that actually has a course description for each one specifically. Yeah, Does I that have help? I'm know? that, um, but it, I'm not seeing. But, I mean, go ahead and send it to me, but it's it's odd. Um, are you asking what the classes are? Yeah, how much are the classes oh. are? Oh, the 100, the 100 pricing. level. I just pricing. Yes, I see the three. Oh. 350 but i don't see the 100 yes let me share my screen uh sorry about that i misunderstood your question <laughs> let me go to our ginormous website that maria loves she said so if you hover over programs courses and tuition right um you click on tuition right and it has the breakdown of all options it starts with our our big boys first, our degrees, then followed by our diplomas, which you can also specialize in hypnotherapy. Ooh, my right ear's ringing. Someone's talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, um, so you can specialize in the integrative healing arts practitioner online. You could do the mind body wellness practitioner. Depends on how big you want to go. If you need to use financial aid, you can use it for anything more than 600 hours. But you so could scroll see, down. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at that. No, no, go back up. Oh, so it's right in the bottom. So it has a role with therapy and then advanced. Yeah, so these are all of our certificates of excellence. So these aren't really designed to be standalone like 
career focused because it's more um, on the modality. Whereas if you're using financial aid or go bigger, it's more for career purposes. And um, I'm looking for hypnotherapy. So here, uh -huh. <laughs> right here is the advanced. Right. I got that. And I'm looking at and the hypnotherapy is right here. So we have tuition is this line here. Uh huh. So if you scroll down, you will see that either on campus or online, it's 2000 for the program. Okay. And then we do, you can pay up front or we do, we can break it down into monthly payments at no interest. So the next, the next question is I take 100, does, do I start from square one with the 7,000 or does some of that tuition go into the 7,000 or is it just a continuum? So the 2000 would apply. So we would, if you went up into the 350 hour, Yes. Then we would subtract two thousand from the right. seven thousand because you've already paid it because oh. the one hundred hours is <laughs> in this program. So we would rework your payment plan to then go up and in. It always what you've taken and what you've paid for always transfers up and in to the higher level of education that you're pursuing. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, great question. And also remember the enrollment fee and the books and everything. Everything's on the tuition page. We hide nothing because we want you to have all of the pieces for success. We are very, we don't enroll everybody. We want to make sure this is a right fit for you at the right time. We're very realistic about the expectation of the homework, the workload, and even where you are in your life. Um, and that's a question you can have with Kochi. A life co uh, admissions coach. They're also life coaches. Um, so Courtney says, not sure if this is a topic you can cover, but you had mentioned getting insurance for your hypno business. What does that look like? I hadn't thought of that. It's just like an LLC, limited liability company, just in case something happened, you know, you, you could have insurance to back you up. Some people yeah. do, some people don't. Yeah. When when you finish your programs after the hundred hours and, and into the advanced hours, you can join an association, and almost all the associations have an insurance company that you work with. And like for me, and I've been doing this a long time, I have my uh, liability insurance runs me about two hundred and twenty five dollars a year, and that's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's very affordable. Right. Um, she said uh, she had planned to have just a legal contract protecting her practice and the client's privacy rights. What are your thoughts on that, Linda? Yeah, absolutely. We teach you in the very beginning, in the first 100 hours, you're going to create your own client intake form and you're going to want a disclaimer on there. And that disclaimer protects you. And, you know, I've been in this business a long, long, long time. And people are always asking me, what about insurance? And it's like, I have it and I've never had to use it. Right. Me ah, too. Amazing. That's a blessing, right? It is. And there's, <laughs> even though a lot of people think, well, they can sue you for this and they can, people can attempt to sue us for a lot of things, but they never do. If anything, they just want more of whatever we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the Courtney, uh, sorry. I mean, Anita. Um, Amy just emailed you the aromatherapy and hypnotherapy program classes. She's on here, the supporting. So cool. She's you're fast, Amy. <laughs> um, Courtney said, what association do you join for the insurance? Years. It depends which association you want to join. So there's a couple of them that you can join after your first hundred hours. And then when, then when you get to 220 hours, there's another association when you get to the 300, there's other associations. So each association has different okay. resources for you. Yeah. Anita or Maria, did y'all raise your hand again? Yes, uh, I did. Yes. Uh, I just real quick, I was a liability adjuster for 20 years for State Farm. And mm. I used to settle uh, claims against, you know, lawsuits against our insureds and Many of them had, um, you know, the sheets that indicates that they're not liable and so forth. 
you're still getting you I still could get sued. So yes, I encourage people to carry insurance for that reason. Gotcha. I guess it depends on how severe the case is that they're claiming, right? Sometimes I did hairdressers, um, uh, nail technicians. Um, oh wow! People like that. So, yeah. Okay, it's good to know. Any hypnotherapists in the mix? <laughs> no. Oh, well, that's no. good to hear. No. That's good to hear. Better safe than sorry, I suppose. And when yeah, you do yeah. carry more insurance, I mean, maybe you're taken more seriously as a professional. I don't know. I personally go from my experience with the practitioner. I don't care what you have as long as I'm able to make the change that I'm I'm hoping for. Right. right. Um, what last questions does everyone have here? You can raise your hand or type it in Q&A. Linda, what last pieces of advice do you think anyone should hear, you know, if they're considering trying hypnotherapy out for themselves and or enrolling to become a hypnotherapist? Like I said earlier, why isn't everybody doing this? You know, for me... <clears throat> Being a client and being a practitioner are the best things I've ever done in my life. And I've had other careers. This has been the most fulfilling and the most enjoyable. And I'm never bored. I'm past retirement age and I don't, I'm not big on retirement. And this is not something you have to retire from. You can do it indefinitely. And it just excites me that to see people wanting to change their lives for the better and that we get to be a party to that is so inspiring. So I say, even if you're just trying it as a client, most of the people I know that tried it as a client became practitioners. I might have to do some statistics <laughs> on that. So we have, might have to reach out to uh, our, our demographic and ask right. that because that is like, it's super proof that it works. Right. Right. Trudy said, right. can you take the 350 hour class first or do you have to take the 100 hour? The yeah. 100 hour is the foundation that you build upon. So yes, but the 350 hour has it built in to it. So you don't have to sign up for them separate. If you're ready to go for the advanced, go for it. If you want to start small and then like um, we said, roll it up and into the larger programs, you can, Trudy. Um, Courtney, do you have, do you do hypnotherapy more in person or online or is it an even split? I think it depends on where you're at. And I go through cycles. Like when I first started, there was no such thing as Zoom. So if I did anything remotely, it was on the phone, which I have done plenty of, of those. And I think it just depends on your clientele. I know I have clients you know, that move across the country or into Europe and they're, I'm still working with them. So definitely it works. And a lot of people think, oh, I don't think I can do those Zoom sessions. They're amazing. And a lot of people who thought they couldn't have a remote business do have one very successfully. Yes. And I think staging of the session is vital for the success of the hypnotherapy session in general. So you can help your client uh, figure out a time when maybe they're home alone or the house is most quiet. They have a, a quiet space, headphones to maybe put on to really go in and under as if you're in the same room, um, turning off the volume on the phone. It's all the little things that you may forget. Um, but staging the right environment, whether you're in person or or online or on the phone is what sets the stage for success. And you do learn that in the program. You'll practice, you'll fail, you'll learn, you'll try again. Um, I have to, I've actually had my internet go out like it just did like this when someone's mid-session. Um, so it's all the things we have to consider um, when we're setting our business up. Mm -hmm. Great question love remembering to say things that I'd forget to say. <laughs> um, yeah. So this has been amazing. See how we could literally stay on here for hours and just keep going. <laughs> um, any last questions while we're here? 
Um, but the, the call to action is, you know, we have Amy Horn here. Amy, maybe um, put in Q&A your direct line and or text number that y'all can call email, y'all can call or email info at suiha.edu. You can call us um, on our main number. 480-994-9244. That will always be ingrained in my subconscious. And we are excited to have you. We have guest passes so that if you're hesitant or you're still a doubter, you know, come into class and just experience what it is for you. Yes, you're so welcome, Maria. Um, she says, thank you, Linda. And I'm trying to think, Linda, are we are there any recordings of you on our website where someone can experience your I don't know about that, but I do have um a podcast that's coming out in another okay. week or so. And that's we did a half hour in hypnotherapy and then we did a half hour in past life. And then I have a lot of recordings um that you can email me and I will send you if it if it, if the file's small enough, I'll send you a copy of one of my recordings. Gladly. Ooh. Okay. Amy said we have sample videos and other class content that admissions coaches can send you to. Thank you, Amy. Cause I'm like, where do we have we should have like a whole page dedicated to some of your sessions, Linda, for people to just have these complimentary mini sessions because well, they're and, amazing. And like the recordings, the MP3s, I have probably about seven or eight recordings that you can listen to. So, okay. Well, yeah, our, our admissions coaches can share that um, with all of you. So Linda, you don't have to do the extra legwork. However, when you do have the podcast up and ready, um, do share that with me and Amy or just me and I'll yeah. pass it to Amy. Yeah. That way we can work that into follow-ups for everyone. Um, whether you join us or not, but just try it out. Could someone please send me some of Linda's recordings? Yes, it will be sent. That was from Nikki. Uh, beautiful. Well, I celebrate all of you for exploring the possibilities. Um, maybe think of having your first session, EBK. I can't wait for you to have your first session and um, and see how it goes for you and where it leads. But you're here for a purpose that we know we honor that first and foremost. And um, wishing you all the best. Last words of wisdom, Linda. Give it a try. It really does work. Amen. It really does. Now I'm going to have to go run some statistics. So we okay. have some proof here. All right. Bye, Thanks, everyone. everybody. Have a blessed weekend. Have a safe Halloween. Yeah. Hey, bye-bye.